Hello everyone, I'm Katie and I'm the artist for Personal Artwork and today I'm going to be starting on part four of this um, portrait. I'm doing a portrait of my dog Jess, she's a working type Cocker Spaniel um, and as you can see from the photo, uh, from the picture here, um, I have done her eyes, her nose, um, her forehead and just started down the bridge of her nose. Um, now, normally what I would do is um, continue down here and then start working on her cheeks uh, and then work start working on the muzzle. Um, however, I've had quite a few messages from um, a few of you just asking for uh, the tutorial around the muzzle first, because as you can see from the photo on the left, um, she does have quite a lot of fine white hairs. Um, so a lot of people have asked for tutorials on, on how I get the, the white hairs around, around the nose. Um, you'll also find that um, underneath her mouth there, there's quite a few fine white hairs as well. So if you use the same technique um, once doing that, you'll, um, you'll achieve nice white lines. Um, now she does have quite a lot of dark greys and blacks in here as well as those white hairs and then as it comes round to her cheeks it's quite brown because of the uh, reflections and when she is in the sun she does get quite a lot of um, brown in her fur so she's not just black she's not just black and white she she does have quite a lot of brown in there so we're going to get those browns in further on now I'm going to be working on the muzzle first so I can show you how to do the white hairs um, and then I'm going to speed up the rest of the video when I come to complete going around her cheeks um, because some of it is pretty much the same. Um, it's just using the same technique on how to get the texture in the fur. Now, if you refer to any of my previous videos, I've done a video on how to draw black fur and I've also done a video on how to draw texture um, in fur. So you can refer to those other videos if you're a little bit stuck um, on how to get your layers. The most important thing is, is to pick out the lightest colours that you can see um, and start from the base layers. So if we, if we call it the background and then the foreground. So start on the background first and then work up um, into the foreground. Now that is normally the case if you have um, the, the fur and you don't have lighter hairs on the outside. Um, so in this case, when doing the muzzle, you can see she has quite a lot of uh, white hairs. So when we come to do those, we will be taking off some of the colour and then fine tuning it. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm just going to zoom in on the area that I'm going to be working and I'll zoom in on the photo as well. That's maybe a little bit too much. Um, there we are. So I'm just going to adjust so you can see the part I'm working on. Um, so... The first thing that um, we need to pick out is the lightest areas. So we're going to be starting just under the nose here because this is normally where her white hairs are, so just under here. So looking at this area here, the lightest colours behind the white hairs is very grey and there are some, some black areas as well. So what we need to do is get that um, darker grey on first and then we, we work on the white hairs afterwards. So I'm just going to get a layer of the grey using your normal technique on applying just a base colour for fur. As you can see, I'm going in the direction that the fur goes in. So her fur go, comes down here. I'm doing this very lightly, nice light layer. And just getting a good coverage with a dark gray. Now I'm using um, warm gray. These are polychromos. So it's the warm gray 9201275. So that's the, the grey that I'm working with. So we can see the lightest colour here is this grey. 
was further down her face here, you do get quite a lot of warm colours. So I'm going with the warmer grey. <clears throat> I'm just going to get a little bit of shape to her face here. And just working on the grey. As you can see, I'm not going straight down. I'm also lifting off after each stroke. So just make sure that you're going... in the right direction, but make sure that your hairs aren't all going in the same direction, if that makes sense. Because otherwise it looks too, too defined and it doesn't look natural. So, nearly there, just applying this base colour. You might not be able to see my sketch lines, but I have very lightly um, put in a sketch just um, just to show me where her face is. Now, normally I do take a little bit longer to, to do this, but obviously this is for a, a tutorial for yourselves. So I'm just going to try and work a little bit quicker than I normally do. And then I can show you this technique. And then if you want to continue and watch the rest of the video on me um, finishing around her face, I'll be working on this for a few more hours today and um, I'll speed it up for you, obviously. So if you want to watch that, then by all means you can do. So her, her fur is going in this direction now, because if, if you can see on the photo to the left, you can see her fur goes round. and then it comes down this way. Now you do need to use quite sharp pencils for this part, um, just because you want it nice and defined. If you look at the, the difference in the fur on this part of a face, as opposed to, if I just move the, the portrait, as opposed to this part, this part of the top of her head, especially where the the light is reflecting off of it. It's very, um, very smooth, whereas this part of her face is a lot more textured. So you want to use nice sharp pencils to get that detail in there. So I've got quite a lot of this covered now. As I say, I'm just doing it very, very quickly to show you. And then we can carry on and... I'll speed it up. So. We don't want too much white showing through at this point. But you do want a nice good layer on. So that is the lightest grey, um, and then what I do like to use, um, I'm just going to sharpen this pencil because it's not very sharp, I do like to use, when it's warm areas, I do like to use um, dark sepia, so I'm going to use that next, and just have a look and see where the next um, darkest grey areas are, so we've got around here I'll just start darkening in those areas yeah. also have a look at the, the length of the, the fur as well that's very important because you don't want your strokes to be too long, especially around the mouth, the generally short-haired. This breed, of course, um, there are other breeds that would be 
will have long hair. So we've got the white hair comes down to about here. So I'm just going to start darkening this area here. Still continuing on with the same technique, just the hair in different different strokes but still following the same direction and then we have a little bit more dark here you can see already there is a bit of texture starting to form there and then she has another darker bit here And it's very dark around this part here, so I'm just going to lay some of this sepia on, which will blend very nicely with the black. Now, as you can also notice on um, the edge around the mouth here, I don't like to have a solid line. Um, because most of what you see is hair, so it's not going to be a completely solid line. In the photo, it's quite dark along here. So I'm going to darken that when I come to do the uh, the black. But I don't like, you know, making a, a line there. I don't like any sharp lines. So keeping it nice and natural. So this is all dark here as well. So it's just building up the colour. building up to your darker and it's dark under here especially in between those white hairs it's very black <clears throat> I keep turning my pencil as well because even though I've sharpened it as you start to use it you'll notice it's um it starts to wear from one side. So I like to turn my pencil and then start using the sharper side. And then it, you get more of a point. Just a little tip. It's just a habit of mine. So you always have a sharp edge. You'll notice as soon as it starts going a bit blunt, <clears throat> you'll need to sharpen again. Right. So I think we're pretty much there on the grey. Now I've probably done that a little bit too dark around here. Um, so I'm just going to lift some of that out with my eraser. Now the eraser that I like to use um, is the Mono Zero Tombow erasers. And this is the small little circular one. Um, it's a bit grubby at the moment. I'll just... there and you can actually get it to to quite a good point so it's good for small little areas like this where you need to just lift out so it's good to correct mistakes as you go along if you notice anything that's off slightly like that then rub it out change it Right, so we are pretty good with the greys now, I think. I'm just going to add a little bit more around here because it is quite dark. <clears throat> and now I'm just going to start applying the final layer of the, with the black. But this, this layer is going to be very, very light, very, very, very light. You don't need to go crazy. We don't want too much colour on this paper because when we come to lift it out, it will be a lot easier. So looking behind those white hairs again, have a look and see where the blacks are. So I can see there's a lot of black in here. 
use that same technique, small strokes, going in different directions. Take your time. It's very dark down here, so I'm going to get a fair bit down here. You'll notice it does still look very grey. But don't worry, on the next steps I'll show you how we get that. How we get it to black. Now it's quite dark around here, so I'm just going to apply some black here. And because I'm only putting light layers on, it does still look maybe too light in areas. Now you'll probably think, oh, there's white hairs there. Why are you doing that black? It's because we're looking behind those white hairs, if you see. And as much as they are white hairs, they they aren't actually white. They'll, they'll be grey. So we'll do a finer grey at the end. Now we don't have any white hairs to do here, so I'm just going to darken this around here while I'm on with the black and start getting some shape. Really take your time with this part because the finer details like this make a massive difference to any portrait. As much as the eyes are the focal point, you'll um, you'll be disappointed if you haven't taken your time to pick out these small little details. Now I'm back to just applying a little bit of black around here. Just a little bit, because it is quite grey under under this part. So very lightly. Now I don't think I've applied much grey on this side, so I'm just going to go back in with the sepia. Because it's not it's not very black as opposed to this darker grey. Now you may do yours differently. I'm not saying this is how you should do it. This is just how I work. So please don't take this as gospel and this is the only way to do it. It's just how I do it. Um, I'm self-taught, so by all means, you know, learn from learn from anybody. Just do how you wish. Now I'm going to introduce this um, this other eraser. You, you've seen me using it before. It's the Mono Zero Tombow eraser, but it's the rectangular one. Um, now I've just applied a new uh, refill on, on this. So it is very square or very rectangular. And I like to use this for hairs because you get that nice straight edge. Um, and you can just just use it to pick out those those hairs. So I'm first of all going to start working around this muzzle and you'll notice how how easy it is to remove the colour. So just using the edge of that eraser, just start picking out those hairs. Now because we haven't applied a massive amount of black, you should be able to just lift it off. Now, when you start seeing some some of this colour on here, just remove it with a piece of scrap paper. Just rub it at an angle. And you'll start, slowly start seeing that um, square edge disappear. It will start going to a point, and that's normally how I use it. Now, I'm going to rub it right down to that point so I can show you how I like to use this eraser. Like I say, it is a new refill, so it's not. Let 
that's probably enough. So that's how I like to use it. So it's almost like a triangular top. And then you can just start picking out those white hairs. I've got a few around here. So, now what we need to do is fine tune these hairs. So picking them out and just using your black pencil, highlight them like that. If you think you need more, and of course, get your eraser. That hasn't given me as fine a point as I normally get it, actually. But we're going to now you just want to worry about either side of that white hair and just fine tuning them. Now, when you first erase them, because we haven't applied a massive amount of the black, they don't look like they stand out very much. So by doing this and going round each of those, I think I need to... Uh, a finer point on my eraser there. And it's just picking out those little hairs. Keep looking at your reference photo and as you can see they're starting to to stand out. Don't worry at this point if you go too dark in some areas with your black. I'm still not applying a massive, you know, I'm not going down hard on it. I'm just conscious that I will be applying more colour to the top in a moment. She does have another few hairs that just just random ones. I'm going to try and get a finer point on this eraser. It's great when you do get a good, nice, fine point. There. I've got this random hair here. Another one there. So I'm just going to find tune it a little bit. Another one here. Right, so we can see that this is very black, so we're going to start applying a, a thicker layer of the black and just avoiding those areas where you've put in your, your hairs. Just keep looking at that reference photo. It doesn't have to be exactly as per the photo, but it's good to just refer to it for the, the shape and how the fur comes down. Just 
just applying more of this black. And come round here. Got a few little white ones here. If you go over it, just take it back out again. Like I say, this this erase is pretty good in taking it out. <clears throat> there. <clears throat> I'll just come back round to this side. This is pretty dark in here. darker area here and darker here as it comes up. Now we're very black in here as well so I'm just going to get this black in. Now you can apply all of your black first and then go in with your eraser to take the white out. Um, and then of course, you know, go in like that if you want to. Um, it just means that you'll have a, a harder job erasing. These hairs here aren't as long as I've done them. I'm just going to take some of these out. There. It's quite dark around here. I'm just going to do these little hairs here first. Now some hairs won't appear as white as others, so I'm just going to show you how we would do that in a moment. Just getting in, looking again behind the hairs, look at the colour of the fur. That bit of the nose is maybe a little bit too light, so I'm just going to darken that. Sometimes you notice that some areas are, that you've done, as much as they look okay on the against the white paper, when you come to do the black, you might want to go over it a little bit. Some black here. Just going to go over this finally with the black. There's not much black in this area here, so I'm just going to put a little bit on. And it's quite grey at this end. Now, what we want to do is really get those hairs to pop. We want them to really come forward from the black. So as much as we've got black next to it, we want to really make it pop. So I'm just going in. It's just broken on me. Just one moment. Um, I'm going to just go in with the luminance pencil.
I'm just rubbing the edge of the pencil just because it's snapped off a little bit. It's a bit too sharp. So nice and sharp and then we want to go in with the luminance pencil and just pick out these little hairs here. So just going over them. Get them to come forward. I'm just going to put a little bit more black around here because I didn't, uh, I didn't do this part here, did I? I keep changing the angle that my hand's in because I don't want it to be in the way. So apologies if my hand or my head or something gets in the way. It's just uh, I get in the in the zone, as my husband says. You get in the zone. Just going to darken this bit a little bit because it's uh, a bit dark around here. We do have a, a couple of little white hairs here, so I'm just going to put them in. And there's just a few little black hairs around here. There's not a lot. I'll fine tune that afterwards. But it's mainly just to show you how to do these white hairs, so I'm going to... I'm going to go back to that and get back to it. So we're just going to fine tune some of these white hairs, a medium pressure. Now, unfortunately, going over um, black with this white, it doesn't really work. You don't really notice the, doesn't make a huge difference. So if you need to, just go back in with your black pencil. Go around those little white hairs, fine tuning them. Just referring to the photograph, just so I can try and make it look pretty much like the photo for you. <clears throat> now I'm just going to zoom out so you can see that from far away. As you can see, the white hairs are sticking out quite, quite well. I'm just going to zoom out on my... just so I can double check, because I was zoomed in quite far there. I like to zoom right in on a photograph, so I can try and get as much detail in as I can. Um, right, so we need some more dark in here. I'm just going to add a bit more black in there. And this is a bit more grey here, so again, I'm just going to, you, you sort of need to do this as you go along.
there. A bit more black around here. Around here. To make that hair a little bit thinner. It's just going either side of the hairs, just trying to get a bit of a bit of that shape in there. I'm just going to make these ones round the base of her nose a little bit lighter. If I can. Again, it doesn't matter if they're not exact to the photograph. As long as you get the basic shape correct. And as you can see, by applying that extra black, it's allowed the, the white to pop out. Now I'm going to zoom back in again on the photograph just so you can see. Um, if you have a look at the base of the hair, it gets darker as it gets lighter. The lightest part is the, the part that is reflecting um, from the light. So the whitest part of the, the hair, say for instance, I'm just going to... Zoom back in here. So as you can see from the photograph, it's light here, but as it gets closer to the nose, because the hair will bend into, into the dog's skin, it will be darker at the base. So what we need to do now is blend it into the black, and that will make it look more realistic. So you go with your lighter gray and just go from dark to light and just pull that black into the hair. You'll also see that some of the hairs are not as bright as the others. So you can start to make those fall back a little bit by using your gray. This one here isn't as bright as I have it. And these ones here. So by just applying the grey, it allows them to fall back. So that the only ones that you can really see are these white ones at the front. I'm just going to... I'm not happy with the point on that. Again, it's not... Um, not as great as it normally is. So we'll go from dark to light. And if it's quite a lot darker, like it is around her nose here, just use your darker greys and just get it to blend. You have to think at how how the fur would lay on the face. Just look at the photograph and how it appears. It's not all white, is it? It'll be darker at the at the root. Yeah. So I'm just going to apply a bit more white to some of them. And then I'm going to go back in with this dark grey around these ones.
Let's get some of this area covered here as well. You'll notice on the edge of a face there, it's, it's a lot lighter. So I'm not going too heavy with this grey. So I'm just going to do another demonstration here of the technique and then I'm going to continue on and you can see it um, as a time lapse if you wish to continue watching. <coughs> so we'll go back in with the sepia. I'm not going right to the edge because that's a lot lighter there. I'm just going to try and get a finer point on this eraser because it is normally work it does work normally a lot better than I've shown you there. Uh, I'm just going to go in with some black because there is some black on this side. Just not a lot. Make that a little bit darker. And then just lift off. That's better. Right. And let's just go in around each of the hairs. I have to be honest, this um, hasn't taken me very long. I normally spend a lot longer doing these parts. So I'm quite impressed that I've done this so quick today. And then we go in with the luminance pencil. Or you could do it with just the pump. Actually, I'm going to do it with the polychromos just to so show you. Um, I thought I had one out. Um, here we go. Just to show you how it is with the polychromos. As you can see, it doesn't, doesn't lift out as well as the luminance. But it just means that you have to go in. If you can't lighten an area anymore, then darken around it. There we go. Now she does have like um like a, a dip here that's that's darker. And it comes round to about here. So I hope that's um, helped you all when you when you come to do your portraits. Because you'll find that they will all have little fine hairs that you need to add. Just so happens that Jess has little white ones, so I'm able to, to show you how to do those. Obviously, if they're darker hairs it's going to be a lot easier to do because you can, doing dark over light is a lot easier than the other way around. So I'm just going to fine tune some of these again just going around them 
with that black pencil. I'm just going to zoom back out so you can see. Starting to get a little bit more shape to the face now. It's looking quite good. Just looking at that reference photo. She does have a little bit of brown as well. Just to the top here, so I'm just going to put that in. It is quite a warm brown, so I'm just going to add this burnt sienna in. Just a hint, not too much. And then you'll see that this is all black here. So I'm just going to do, again, I'm just going to show you how to add those. Those hairs, there aren't any here, so I'm just going to go quite heavy here. They're mostly around this area here, so I'm just going to apply a layer of this black. And it's probably darker the closer it is to her face, what it generally is. Yep. Don't go crazy to start with a nice even layer just to cover the to cover the paper. I'm just following the reference photo because it comes down down here. Of course I'm going to do the the ears in the next part. So I'm going to be uh, showing you how to do those in the next part. But a lot of this is very black around here so there's not a great deal of detail that we can add. I think what I'll do is a a separate video for doing underneath a mouth in the neck. So just refer to your photograph, make sure you get those shapes in correct. This comes round and she's got a bit of, well she's just been for a walk so it could be anything around her mouth. Um, just down there, I think I'll just leave that out and just put the the fine hairs in there and her mouth comes up to about here so I'm just going to put some of these in now some people say why don't you just leave them so that you can you've got the the paper showing I much prefer to um, to do it this way just because as much as the hairs might appear to be white, just because they're so bright, they're actually grey. So you don't want them to be completely white. And also you don't get a good natural look to hairs if they are just drawn around. So I'm just going to Lift some of these out. A little one here, a little one there. Just got one further round there as well. I'll add that next. One here. So it's just again just going round them, darkening this area here because it is very dark. You see how that pops. And then again, you'll notice the... Oh, went off a little bit there. I'm just going to take that back out. Again, you'll see at the tip of the hair, 
it's not completely light either so just go straight in the base and then it's lighter there's a few really faint ones in there so you can do that with your white pencil if you want to depends how much detail you want to add really and then what I like to do is just go around this edge because the, the light is coming off it just soften that up just by going around with your white pencil just so it's, it doesn't have a completely crisp edge because it won't do naturally so I think I'm going to leave it at that for this part um, and then I will add the, another part for the rest of her face. So I think I'll just do a part five for the rest of her face and I'll just do it as a time lapse just like um, I did with part three. Um, so I'm going to be working on, on this, this part of her face now. But if you have any questions at all um, with regards to adding black fur... Um, and adding these like tiny little white hairs if you have any questions at all then just drop me a comment below I'm more than happy to answer any questions or if you would um, like to drop me a message over on my Facebook page if you have Facebook um, I'm personal artwork or you can drop me an email via my website which is personalartwork.co.uk um, and like I say I'm more than happy to to answer any questions that you may have so um, that's pretty much it. I mean, this has been about 50 minutes, so I think I'll just leave it as that um, and look forward to part five and I'll continue on. Take care. Bye bye.